container gardening is more popular than ever. Indoors and out, so many options and styles. Valley Nursery specializes in container gardens and has a fabulous selection of pots. Maria Taylor, custom container designer, is here with me today to cover the ABCs of containers and share some ingenious tips for choosing the right one. How about we start from the bottom up with the drainage holes, right? Perfect. When would you use a pot that doesn't have them? Okay, so the only time I ever recommend doing that is if you have something seasonally that you're gonna plant in it, it's not gonna live there long term. Um, maybe something that you're gonna change out often. Definitely houseplants can handle that because oftentimes they come with already a little plastic pot and you're gonna drop it into something that doesn't have holes and it can live and you can water it like this. You also can place a saucer into a container that could collect it and then you can dump that so it doesn't create a water bog. Okay. I think what we want people to know is to not put uh, rocks or gravel in the bottom of a pot and just say, oh, okay, it doesn't have drainage holes. I'm just going to be really careful about the watering. Right. I don't know where that old wife tails came in, but don't do that, okay? It's just going to create a sticky, slimy mess yeah. that just is like a perfect place for bacteria to grow and then that's going to evaporate up into the root structure of your plant and it's going to aid in the failing of what you have planted in there. So I wouldn't do that ever. Right. Always just soil to the bottom and plants. A drainage hole. Drainage holes. <laughs> well, I've heard yeah. broken pottery shards, styrofoam yeah. peanuts, plastic bottles. So many things. Yeah, we're agreed. No, we're not going Don't there. Don't do that. <laughs> Lots of drainage holes. If you need help, we can drill a hole for you at Valley. And um, just plain old potting soil is the best remedy for that. Tell us about using containers outdoors year round. Yeah. What do we need to know about weatherproofing? So there's a lot of containers that don't really like to live year round outside. One of them is terracotta. It is a porous substance and once the water fills up in it after the roots are wet, it's going to expand and then crack when it gets when it freezes, when temperatures freeze. So the best thing to use is something that's glazed, outdoor pottery. You can also use plastic. It does eventually kind of fall to the UV rays. There's also wood and metal that you can use also. But if you wanna do the investment of having a very long lived container, I would go with a large glazed outdoor pottery. This you know, might last a season, but they're so much better as indoor containers or even if you just have like a hot spot and maybe you move that pot into a sunroom type of situation. Okay, and that makes perfect sense. But so there's metal, baskets, concrete. It's endless. Uh, yeah, so uh -huh. lots of different types of pots that you can yeah. choose. I have a burning question for you. Okay. So pot feet, saucers, yes. are they really necessary? Okay, so aesthetically, they're pretty. They add a look, right? But they're also gonna work for you. They're gonna protect if you have a traditional wood porch. They're gonna add airflow underneath, and so that way that pot that you're watering isn't just draining directly onto the porch, and then all that moisture, where does that go? You can put it in here and you can dump it, and then that's really going to help the longevity of your porch. And you don't have to buy pot feet. You can use pieces of wood from a deck, you can use bricks, you can use anything. Just kinda gotta get a little creative with that. The variety of shapes of pots, I think is really cool. Yes. What have you learned though about using the different shapes um, from your experience? I would only ever look for something that has an open mouth. Anything that is gonna curve in and be more narrow at the top is gonna be really hard to transplant. Oh, right. Unless this is gonna live there for a very long time. I mean, think about if it's growing like this, the roots, you're gonna plant it and those roots are gonna expand. You're gonna have to go in and saw the roots in order to get the tree or the container or the plant out. So transplanting is, is, is just problematic. Almost non-existent. You're gonna probably have to break the pot to oh, get it out. Okay. And you don't wanna do that because you spent money on a beautiful pot. So think about that. How long is that gonna live there in that container? All right. Yeah. Now for annuals and big pots. Annuals and big pots. This is not a very good example, but it, it works for us, right? Because it's not as big. But if you have a pot, maybe it's really large and it fits beautifully on the sides of your house or your door, um, you can use one of these, which is called an upsy daisy, and you can put that in there and that creates a negative space down below. So then that way you have space for water to drain through, 
and the plants to thrive on the roots on the top. And then your soil goes right there. Okay, so if you have something that's shallowly rooted. Yeah. It, it will work that, okay. that way. And the roots wouldn't, if you just planted it normally in a big pot, the roots would get down and, mm -hmm. but they wouldn't well, reach the bottom, bottom and the water wouldn't evaporate. Exactly, so if you're filling, if you have a very shallow rooted thing or it's not gonna live in there for very long, and this has so much soil from here down, it can just create a bog and what's it gonna do? Evaporate up into the roots. Probably kill your plant. <laughs> No plant death. We don't want no plant death. We, don't, we want you to be successful. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Words of wisdom about like hanging pots? Yeah, sure. For annual hanging pots, I really like to go 14 inches or larger because that gives it more roots, more, sorry, more soil for the roots to thrive in. And then think about if you're gonna plant something that is a perennial, you'll probably wanna put less perennials in than you would annuals. Annuals are only gonna live until frost, but perennials have the opportunity to live year after year, and you'll have more success if it's planted in a larger pot that can accommodate the soil and the root growth. All right, so let's transition to talking about plant supports. Yes. Typically with a pot, mm -hmm. it's hard to get a trellis or a stake deep enough into the pot yes. to support the weight of a climbing plant. Uh, monsteras, for instance, are really popular like now. Mm -hmm. They like to creep. Yeah. What, is, what solutions might you have? So you can use traditionally like a wooden stake, but we have also some really lovely uh, trellises that That's can cool. fit down into the container. Okay. And once that plant roots in, it will hold the trellis down. We also have these really cool moss covered stakes that make it so the plant, like a monstera, which has aerial roots attached to. Like this guy? This. Yep, exactly. Like this guy really works really nice. And you can create shapes with it too, because it's bendable. Thank you for sharing your You're expertise welcome. with our viewers. And for the latest container gardening supplies and trends, visit Valley Nursery in Paulsville. For more information, go to valleynurseryinc.com.